Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be doing a video on 2D frame analysis and we'll just be giving some tips and tricks on what to do when you're doing your own analysis. So my first tip is actually before you even start doing your 2D frame analysis, you should write down your assumptions or draw a sketch 2D frame just to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing before you even start putting stuff into a piece of software. So what I like to do is just draw out a really simple 2D frame with dimensions like the span and the height of the columns. And I would have wanted to have done the load takedown already. And if I'm applying loads to my frame, I would have already worked these out. So in this example, I've got a really simple 2D frame with columns and a beam. And I've got a UDL along the main beam and I've got some point loads and also a wind load. Now that we've set it up, we can now move on to the actual software. Because you've already sketched it up, it's really easy for you to just create it in that piece of software. I'm using Robot here, but it's pretty much going to be exactly the same for many other different types of analysis software. And I won't be getting into the different types because every company uses a different piece of software and you'll just have to learn whatever that company gives you. So my second tip is to understand what kind of supports you're going to be putting in and to make sure that you don't forget to actually put them in. On a 2D frame it's pretty obvious when you haven't put them in but when you start doing big 3D models it is surprisingly how often you can forget to add a support to a column. My next tip would be to make sure you are quite liberal with the load cases that you create. You do have your generic load cases for dead load, live load, wind load, but if you've got any special load cases, don't just lump them in into your generic like dead load load case. Just create a, another one and it's so much easier for the checker to see what loads or what special loads that you've applied to the model. Now this varies with different software, but always check which load case the self weight is automatically calculated or even if it is automatically calculated. In Robot, the first load case which you generate includes the self weight. My next tip would be to avoid using the automatic load combination generators. Unless you're really, really familiar on how a piece of software auto generates load combinations, it's better if you just create your own manual combinations to start with. Automatically generating load combinations can create a lot of unnecessary load combinations, especially if your model is small. You also have to be really, really familiar on how that software generates the combinations. What factors are they applying? You know, are they using 1.35 for dead load or are they using British Standard 1.4 or are they using 1.25? It's really important that you find out and if you really aren't familiar with it, I highly suggest just creating your own load combinations like I'm doing now. By creating your own load combinations, you do get a lot more control and I think that's really important, especially for you know younger engineers. It allows you to understand what's going on with your model, rather than simply relying on automatically generated values. Having a lot of automatically generated load combinations can also slow your model down. On a small 2D frame like this, it's not going to make a huge difference. But as you progress and you start working on bigger models, having loads and loads of unnecessary load cases is really going to slow down your analysis time and it's just gonna slow down your efficiency. So after you've created your load cases, you're probably gonna be wanting to apply some loads to your model. And it probably is really obvious, but you want to make sure that the loads you apply are within the correct load case. So make sure that, you know, if you're applying a dead load, that you're in the dead load load case. You also want to double check that the load is applied in the right direction. Every piece of software is different. You know, you wanna check if it's global or local axis so sometimes you know it might be counterintuitive but say for example in robot the global axis z is pointing upwards so if you want to apply a load going downwards you need to make sure that you put a negative sign to your load value you want to be double checking that the loads you apply are the correct values and pointing in the right direction and a good way to do this is to make sure you've got the loads and the load value showing on your analytical models. Whenever you do the analysis, it's always a good idea to remove or do your best to remove any warnings or errors. Errors you definitely want to correct and warnings, depending on what the warning is, you also want to try and fix that as well. 
run your analysis often just to do a quick check just to make sure that anything you've added recently hasn't caused some sort of error. This is going to be more often when you start making bigger 3D models, so it's a good habit to get into. Another good way to check if your model is behaving correctly is to look at the deflection. If the deflection is just way off, you know, if it's going down or up or sideways by about like a thousand mil or like a million mil, that means something's really, really wrong and either a node is not connected or something is just horribly broken. So if you look at the deflections, it can be quite obvious sometimes where the problem has occurred and you can go ahead and fix it. Once you're happy with your model and you know that everything is working correctly, you haven't got any warnings or errors, that's where you can go around and start playing with the section sizes. And once you've put in some new section sizes, that's when you can rerun the analysis, look at, start looking at the analysis information, like the bending moment, the shear forces, reactions, and the deflections. You can see here that once I start looking at the bending moments, I've got moments in the bottom of the beam and also at the connections, which means that I've got a fixed end connection. So what I've analyzed is actually a moment frame. So sometimes you don't want a moment frame. Sometimes you just want a simply supported beam between two columns. This will vary between software, but in robot, when you create a beam, it's automatically a fixed end. So if you want to create a pinned support or a simply supported beam, you have to go into the beam properties and change the end fixities. This is really important in steel frame design because very often in steel frame, you want simple connections everywhere and you really want to avoid having moment connections because they're a lot more expensive. In this example, I do quickly just change to a simply supported beam it throws up a load of warnings because I haven't set up all the correct end fixed tees. Um, this is not actually what I want. I actually do want a moment frame, so I change it back to the default settings. So once you're happy with your analysis, that's where you can start using the results to go and design the beams and the columns, your foundations, and everything you, you need to actually fully design this frame. Some pieces of software will have their own built-in designer, but if they don't, don't worry because you can just take the analysis output and check it against the section capacities. In concrete frame design, because it's quite complicated, it's really often that you will take the analysis output or the contour maps from a slab, say, and then you will run it through a load of spreadsheets because sometimes the inbuilt concrete designer is not accurate enough or we're not quite sure how it's doing stuff. So you take the analysis output and you run it through say hand calculations or spreadsheets or other methods. It's really important that you understand certain limitations with software. And if you're new to a piece of software that you do enough testing to make sure that you're absolutely happy with the design output or the analysis output that it's giving you. Before jumping into big 3D models, make sure you do some practice on some smaller models just to get really familiar with how a piece of software works, how the output is given to you. Using software like this, needs a high level of engineering judgment and if you're new to it or you're not very sure always ask for help always ask your senior engineer for some guidance on how to use it or how to interrogate the model if you found this video useful please remember to like and subscribe and i'll catch you on the next video cheers